Welcome back to Bold TV. I'm Philip Michael. And I'm David Grasso. And right now, it seems like most people are trying to go green, and one of the things experts recommend is cutting back on animal products. That's really hard for me. Yeah, is it? Yeah, the meat-free diet, for me, it's difficult, and some people on the plant-based stuff, come on, let's face it, it's not exactly the it's same. It's not exactly the same. Did you see the new Coming to America, and they made this joke where uh, a plant-based burger, and it was just whoosh. But I have seen others that are actually pretty good, and that's where... You know, science could come in and see if we can recreate. Well, it's getting some better, right? So let's give it a chance. Exactly. Right? <laughs> and joining us today to talk about slaughter-free meat is Eric Jankuski, the co-founder and CEO of Matrix Meats. Welcome, Eric. Hi. Thank you. How you doing? Yeah. Thank. Th thanks for having me and giving me an opportunity to uh, talk about cultivated meat. All right. Let's talk about. It. Let's jump right into it. How do you make this meat without killing animals? So, unfortunately, Ma Matrix Meats is a little bit of a misnomer. We ourselves don't do any cultivation of meat, but what we do do is design the three-dimensional nanofiber scaffolds that other companies grow uh, their meat cells on. Wow. So you guys are the people that provide the supplies to make this Beyond Meat stuff, correct? Uh, not exactly Beyond Meat. So in the alternative protein world, there's, there's two sides. One side is the plant side, and that's the uh, Impossible Burgers and Beyond Meat. On the other side is the cultivated meat side, which are the Memphis meats, the Mosa meats, the Aleph, uh, Aleph Farms, uh, et cetera, uh, just uh, recently released uh, through their uh, Good Food Division, a chicken nugget that's available for sale in Singapore. So this is real meat then? It's it's real meat. It's not GMO. It's it, it's actual meat. So what happens is they take a cell biopsy, seed it onto our scaffold. That scaffold is placed into a bioreactor, glorified term for petri dish, uh, and and then a growth media which provides the nutrients, etc. The cells then grow across those fibers that you see in this uh, uh, photo right now, and and then. Uh, form a solid piece of meat. So it's growing muscle without growing it inside the body. So this is what I'm trying to understand, because again, I like to conceptualize things in ways that a seven-year-old can understand, and naturally people will see the Burger King, the new Whopper, and it's like, it's almost like meat, and, and, and it's really not meat. So just to make this clear distinction, this is not a veggie, uh, veggie um, meat alternative. This is actual meat that's made outside of the animal body? Correct, it's slaughter-free meat. That is uh, amazing. That's insane. It's in a good way. Yeah. The, you know, the craziest thing is that that Sir Winston Churchill envisioned this back in the early 1930s. He said he looked forward to the day that we didn't have to grow a whole chicken just to enjoy a chicken breast. And 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 it, that day is now here. But, but just back, just back to the question: Could vegans eat this since no animals were hurt, or, or does that contradict the vegan way? Talk to us about that. I think that it depends upon the reason why an individual is vegan. Okay. If the individual is vegan because of of their desire to not eat meat uh, that that injured an animal in order to produce that meat, then yes, this is a meat product they would they would be able to eat. It also opens uh, there's there's very interesting conversations going on right now in Israel and the rabbinical community, uh, also in the imam communities. Uh, uh, regarding whether or not certain meat products are now going to be allowed within these religions. Yeah, so basically Hindus could also eat this potentially because this is uh, not cruel. Correct. So question for you. Let's talk about environmental impact. It's Earth Week, of course. So w what does this mean for environmental impact? Because as we know, agriculture is one of the most intensive, you know, carbon-wise, clean water, clean air, especially beef. I'm a major beef eater, right? And we know mm -hmm. beef is actually the most intensive meat. So will this help our environmental issues? It will absolutely help our environmental issues. As, as we have uh, growing middle classes and a number of uh, expanding uh, economies in the world, India, China, et cetera, the demand for protein is growing at a rate never before seen in history, that demand for protein is causing folks to deforest uh, 
uh, places like the Amazon at an ever increasing rate for the sole purpose of grazing cattle. And if you study, if you take away even the environmental aspect, you take away the animal rights aspect, and you truly look at this as strictly just a business case, no one would design their business the way that uh, cattle grazing is. The amount of resources that are utilized versus the output received, is it, it's just ridiculous. And I'm a capitalist, I mean, it, but I, I'm also a realist. Mm -hmm. And if there's a way to do something better, and that's one of the reasons why I got involved with Matrix Meats uh, and helped co-found it, is because I saw an opportunity to deliver the protein that the world needs while also being able to help with climate change and animal rights. Now, speaking of matrix meats, do you think people will be afraid to try this? Because someone may look, look, this is by this is bionic meat. Will I get food poisoning? Will will my body revolt? Is it healthy? Is it healthy? Exactly. Yeah. There is really a lot of demand for ethically and sustainably produced protein products. Uh, the number one selling products in the supermarket and in restaurants have been, you know, the plant-based products that have come out over the last three years. Uh, you, you can look at restaurant uh, categories, uh, especially in the fast food realm. You can look in supermarket. The demand. I mean, ju just walk, uh, you know, around your uh, your supermarket. And you'll see just an explosion of plant-based protein products available uh, there because the demand is there. But Eric, People I don't like the way they taste. Does this taste good? Because I won't eat plant-based products. I won't eat the pl plant-based Whopper. I won't eat the Impossible Burger. Never have, never will. <laughs> is this slaughter-free meat different? The slaughter-free meat will taste like regular meat. The exact same. Uh, indistinguishable. Would you would you do this? Would you try this? Yes, a hundred percent. I think it would check off a lot of boxes. I think for someone like my mother, who's an animal rights person, but mm -hmm. also enjoys a good steak, this is a perfect <laughs> meeting. And you know, it, shouldn't it be technically healthier because we can actually control what the way these Great cells question. are grown, etc. So it will be organic, etc. Correct. And and what, one of the things that the global pandemic, that COVID-19 highlighted, was the insecurity in our food system and and the, the transmission of diseases from animals to human beings uh, a lot of times occurs during the slaughtering process. Because when you're slaughtering the animal, you're releasing the blood, the urine, the feces, everything. I hate to be blunt, but that's what happens. And that's where the cross-contamination occurs uh, it, of the meat, of the food product, you eliminate that entire opportunity for cross-contamination. So therefore you eliminate E. coli and, and salmonella and all these other issues can be conceivably eliminated and, or at least dramatically reduced uh, to provide a more secure food supply. That's amazing. So much to so much to uh, unpack. Yeah, digest. <laughs> yes, no pun intended. But thank you so much for the insights here, and thank you for being here, Eric. No problem. My pleasure. And thank you all for watching. Make sure you follow Bold TV on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. I'm Philip Michael, and I'm David Grasso. Have a great day.